Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. I'm just going to jump right in. Um, we're finishing the lesson on Reapers. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm sorry it got cut off because my computer didn't have enough space. I had to get rid of the videos that I that I had previously made for YouTube. Um, okay, so summary. Reapers harvest the elect. When we are immersed and pledge ourselves to Yahuwah's covenant of kindness and our, our names are on the rolls as citizens, wait, when we are immersed and pledge ourselves to Yahuwah's covenant of kindness, our names are on the rolls as citizens in his kingdom and his blood redeems us completely. We are rescued from the second death the lake of fire at the second resurrection after the millennium. First resurrection, wise virgins, the bride of Yahusha. As we progress in our relationship with him, he may select us to be in the first resurrection and given a higher calling. As the bride, wise virgins, they are ready and are the first fruits. The day of Yahusha is the day of Yahuwah. Those obeying the commandments and holding to the testimony of Yahusha are the first fruits, and while others are behaving according to traditions or going their own way. As Yahusha's at Rehu, or sorry, at Yahusha's return, those who are waiting for him will be easily distinguishable from the rest, and see the day of Yahuwah take away the weeds. Afterward, these will go into the wedding supper of the Lamb. We call ourselves Nazarene, branches of the teachings of Yahusha. The word also means guardians, and we guard the word and the name. Second resurrection, unwise virgins. Those in the second resurrection will never be the bride, but rather friends of the bride unwise virgins. They will have missed the wedding supper by 1,000 years. No one is in heaven except the one who descended. Yehukanen 3.13 and Acts 2.34 But at Yahusha's coming, we will rise to meet him and reign for 1,000 years here on the earth with him. If we are among the first fruits, if not, we will be raised at the end of the 1,000 years, and those whose names are found in the scroll of life will receive their reward of eternal life, still here on the earth. It will not be in another location called heaven. That's a pagan myth. Men have turned aside to believe in 2 Timothy 4.4. 4. Timothy 4. As we grow by walking with him... Uh, sorry... We become more and more like Yahusha, and he cleanses our minds and our hearts from all the dross, men's false teaching, and old wine. Constantine brought together Mandaeans, Zoroastrians, Mithraic mystagogues, and other sun-worshipping cultures by blending them into a resurrection or a resurrected savior while rejecting the cultures that that savior came from and most especially to the authority of the Ten Commandments. With the great power given to this fourth beast, the world order follows the harlot woman, Babel the Great. The reign of Babel will fall at the arrival of the reign of Yahusha. His ambassadors are proclaiming his soon return. Word and name. Above all else is the word, Torah, and the name, Psalm 138.2. Just before Yahusha returns, there will be a distinct difference in those behaving without the commandments of love and those who live by them. The reapers will have no problem sorting out the weeds from the wheat. He who does wrong, let him do more wrong. He who is filthy, let him be more, more filthy. He who is righteous, let him be more righteous. He who is set apart, let him be more set apart. And see, I am coming speedily, and my reward is with me, 
to give to each according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those doing his commands, so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city. Revelation 22, 11 through 14. The goal of the Torah is love, and the Torah is the word. The sum up to sum up the word, we have Yehukanen 1334. Love one another as I have loved you. Yehusha's first public announcement concerned the day of Yahuwah as he proclaimed, Repent, for the reign of Yahuwah draws near. Matthew 4.17 Repeating the same message of his cousin Yehukanen the Immerser. Matthew 3.2 this is, this is the message of the kingdom then and now. If people do not repent, they will perish in the day of wrath, the day of Yahuwah. We will not see Yahusha again until we use his name, which he removed from us because of our disobedience. His name is being restored because he is raising up Nazarim as his emissaries to announce the reign of Yahusha. See, your house is left to you laid waste. And truly I say to you, you shall by no means see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah. Baruch Abab Hashem Yahuwah. Luke 13, 35. His Nazarim are saying it now. Listen to the message of Aliyahu. Malachi 4, 1 through 6. The reign of Babel is about to be annihilated in the lake of fire, along with the false prophet and the dragon's scheming. Okay, here's some illustrations. I'll read them and show them to you. Constantine, our heritage. Eagle on top of a sun. Stop the nonsense. Beastly behavior. Okay. The top pictures, and then this one. Okay. Did Yahusha intend for us to venerate human remains or kneel before images representing him or other human beings? We may as well kneel before images of animals as well, for all the good things, all the good such things do. Mordecai wouldn't bow to Haman, he just stood out like a sore thumb in the crowd. The one we obey is the one we are servants of, so we should not bow down to anything but Yahusha himself. As for me and my house, we serve Yahuwah. His name declares who he is. We worship what we know, Yahuwah. yod heh uah Yahusha. Yod he uashin ayin, for deliverance is of the Yahudim. Yahusha means I am your deliverer. There is no other name given under heaven by which we must be delivered. Not Zeus, I H S I E S V, I X Thus, Ishtar, Isus, Krishna, Christos, J E S U S, L O R D, Baal. Baruch Abba Yahuwah. And I just read you guys the picture. Um, study the Hebrew script of the name above all names. And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we need to be saved. Acts 4.12 Operation Clean Sweep. When the day of Yahuwah comes, the reapers will remove all the uh, all things undesirable. They will burn man and beast alike. They will even sweep clean the demonic realm. A new rain will have arrived. People will burst into flames all around us, screaming in terror. We are working. We are workers planting seeds. They need to hear from us now, before the day of Yahuwah. A very special kind of behavior and presence will distinguish us from those being taken, a seal in our forehead proving the name of our owner, Yahusha. Those belonging to him are sealed. He produces the fruits, we merely bear them. 
we bear the fruits he produces them. His presence is in us. His presence in us will be the way the reapers will know who goes and who stays. Even demons believe in Shudder because they cannot bear his fruits and so will be swept away. Then he said to them, the harvest indeed is great, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray the master of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Go, make haste. See, I send you out as lambs into the midst of wolves. Luke 10, 2-3 Torah Institute's Public Safety Advisory. From Wormwood, we learn to do things Yahuwah told us to never do. Fallen down drunk. Don't drive <laughs> while under the influence of Wormwood. Beware of signs and wonders. Truth cannot be moved by a lie. Scripture does not direct us to prove anything by signs and wonders, but rather to test whether what is said or done is of Yahuwah and if it lines up with what he said. If you have any doubt the true name is Yahusha, read Zechariah 3.1. In the Hebrew text, and you'll see the letters yod Hey uah shin ayin What does that spell? Ew, Bella. Trying to prove J-E-S-U-S using Greek while denying the Hebrew name is how magicians use misdirection to de de deceive us. It, if signs are how we discern truth, then every magician is performing miracles and not using tricks. Have we inherited lies and futility? Yermiyahu 1619. The name J-E-S-U-S first appeared in print in the 17th century and is not Hebrew. Google Yahusha, the truth will set you free. If it's a lie, the dragon told it. Why keep pretending it's truth? Repeating a lie will never make anything true. You know that can get you burned, right? Postscript. What is the name above all names? We have an identity crisis. People encountering the Hebrew name of our master will automatically say, He knows my heart. It doesn't matter what we call him. If only they could support this with some scripture, scripture text teaching this idea. Yahuwah says he is jealous and gave examples of how they stopped using his name but called on Baal, L-O-R-D, instead, instead of calling on his name. See Yermiyahu 2326. Look at this text of Yahshiyahu or Isaiah. I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my esteem I do not give to another, nor my praise to idols. Yahshiyahu 42.8. The Hebrew name Michael or Michal is Michael in Greek. G3413 is the concordance number. Daniel is Daniel or er, G1158. Adam is Adam, G76. Even Shatan is Satanus, um, G4567. But IESV shows up in our KJV in place of the real name. Later, the KJV altered IESV to JESUS. No one ever laid eyes on the word JESUS until the 17th century. What's that all about? What's, what's that about? Some pastors are speaking to their congregations about this, being dumbfounded about the deception and saying so. Others rail against those teachings, the Hebrew roots of our faith. If the correct Hebrew name for our deliverer is Yahusha, how can it be some other name in English? You can't change a name. Whatever language it's in, that's what the name is. Obviously, only false teachers would teach another name. How, do we, how can we recognize a false teacher? They teach things Yahuwah did not speak about, and instead bear down with things men invented. They use languages to misdirect, knowing that most of their victims don't know the difference between translating and transliterating. The Pharisees never knew of anyone named J-E-S-U-S. -S. 
The only I'm only pointing out what is overwhelmingly obvious and sharing light. I was once blind also. The reason the name was taken from the lips of Yahuwah's people is because they would not obey him. As long as we will not obey him, he will not allow us to call on his name either. Yahshayahu or Isaiah 8.20 shows us how to recognize a false teacher. Mm -hmm. Which of Yahuwah's ten commandments can you read at Exodus Shamoth 20? And honestly say it is practiced. If we don't practice them, then a false teacher has influenced us to disregard or annul those we fail to abide in. If we abide in Yahusha's word and he is Yahuwah, our deliverer, then we are truly his pupils. And we, know, we will know the truth, his words, and the truth will set us free. People walking in darkness. Love Yahuwah, love one another. Torah vision, have seen a great light. Obedient ones are the Nazarene counterculture. Counterculture definition, noun, a way of life instead of attributes, opposed to or at variance with the prevailing social norm. Yahusha will instill his spirit in those who will submit to his will. He will give them his Torah vision, the ability to see his heart's perspective of how we walk, live, and behave, is how we walk. Yahusha and his pupils were the counterculture of his day. He was not rebellious against Torah, but against the establish establishment's failure to live by Torah. They were practicing men's traditions, not the instructions of Yahuwah, which teach us love and consideration for others. The witness of Yahusha. About 2,000 years ago, a message or testimony was given to some average men to share with every nation, tribe, and language across this planet. The message was so powerful, it was attacked by an enemy whose estate is in the spiritual dimension, a higher plane than mortals can perceive. In this higher plane, there is, there is a war being waged to dominate the minds of mankind. Your mind is part of this war's battlefield. The message has been corrupted so badly it is rarely heard. All those who are gainfully employed to proclaim it have no clue what the message is. To the Torah and to the witness, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no light of dawn. Isaiah or Yahshiyahu 8.20. His word is on the last page. Yahusha's witness is also known as the Great Commission. The final word or end of the matter, Ecclesiastes 12.13, is to obey the commandments of Yahuwah. They teach us to love and are the living words to be written on every heart. The, this covenant of loving kindness is the bond of marriage between us and Yahuwah. Our enemy works against it. The day of Yahuwah is also called the day of Yahusha. Psalm 91 describes judgment day, the time the seraphim or reapers are sent to reap the grapes consigned for wrath. They will have, they will have been appointed to guard us in all our ways and not let us even so much as stub our toe, dash our foot against a stone. Verse 12. The next section is the enemy will be removed from reigning, will be removed from power. Many unbelievers blame Yahuwah for all the suffering in the world, but it will be shown at the end. It was the enemy that brought the first lie into the world and continues to deceive mankind to this day and continually until Yahusha's return. Some atheists hold to their atheism because they are they are angry at Yahuwah, but it, it, blah, 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 blah. it is the enemy they should be blaming. The enemy is called a man in the following text, meaning person. This enemy will be put on display as the perpetrator and held in a pit for a time of final destruction of all those who rebelled against Yahuwah. Yahshiyahu or Isaiah 14, 16 through 20. 
those who see you see you stare at you and ponder over you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook rains, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who would not open the house of his prisoners? All the sovereigns of the Gentiles, all of them, were laid in esteem, everyone in his own house, but you have been thrown from your grave like an abominable, abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword." Go, who go down to the stones of the pit like a trampled corpse. You are not joined with them in burial, for you have destroyed your land and slain your land and slain your people. Let the seed of evildoers never be mentioned. The next section is Gnosticism, Greek for knowing. A huge invasion of foreign religious habit, habits from the East occurred before, during, and after Yahushua was born. Eastern thought continues to influence the, influence the whole world, all, as the Dalai Lama is celebrated constantly. Coinciding with the, this invasion of enlightenment from the East, Judaism incorporated aspects of it into how they, they viewed themselves as above or lifted up lifted up, exalted, rab, relative to the common people, the rab or exalted one, rabbi, my exalted one, emerged as a teaching authority, the prushim, the prushim Pharisees meaning separated ones, assumed the role of the gurus, guiding pupils into their traditions, this Nicolaitan hierarchy lording over the people, is hated by Yahusha for its hypocrisy. Hinduism is ancient sun worship, and gurus were considered spiritual guides into enlightenment matched to the idea of rabbis. Hinduism's four levels of interpretation was also brought into Judaism, in which is called Kabbalism today. Many Nazarene teachers have fallen for this, and many, other inherit many others inherited lies. As Gnostic ideas developed, the non-physical realm was considered perfect and the physical realm corrupt. This is why Yehukanan wrote about it at 2 Yehukanan or John chapter 1, 7. Because many who are leading astray went out into the world who do not confess Yehusha, confess Yehusha Mashiach as coming in the flesh. This one is he who is leading astray and the anti-Mashiach. Many Gnostic ideas were carried over from the Eastern teachings of Hinduism. Another was the familiar idea of folding the hands in prayer, shown in the illustration. It is called Namaste and means the spirit in me bows to the spirit in you. Again, we perceive how the spiritual realm is regarded as perfect, and yet are, we are commanded to not bow to any entity but Yahuwah, the maker of all things visible and invisible. It's all about sun worship. And this is the picture here. <clears throat> Pagan namaste gesture. Mutant sun worship. Catholic nun, Buddhist nun. There's no difference. They both have their hands like this. Papist beads, Muslim beads... If Satan invented rosaries, why would he be afraid of them, says a man that looks like a reptilian in his eyes. Buddha beads. And uh, Matthew 6, 7. And when praying, do not keep on babbling like the Gentiles, for they think that they shall be heard for their many words. And that is the picture for that one there. In the 2nd century BCE, Egyptian worshippers of Serapis were called by the Greek term Christians. They bowed to crux-shaped objects, the ancient symbol of the sun. The roots of Christianity originate from Greek sun cults in Egypt. But Constantine formerly adopted all the pagan sun worship together with the Roman sun cults existing magisterium. The Roman Kaiser or Pope and Cardinals' overt sun worship became veiled. 
yet remained intact. Babel's mother of harlots wore the disguise of Christianity as the fourth beast. But today the Nazarim are pulling up her skirt for all to see. The great deal of Babel's sun worship came through Hinduism. Even the holy waters of the Ganges was brought over into early Catholicism. The halo, halos on statues are seen first in Hinduism's idolatry and also adopted by early Catholicism. The prayer beads or repetitive prayers came into Catholicism later adopted from Hinduism through Islam at Fatima, a city in Spain, captured from the Moors by Catholics. An apparition of Mary handed the beads to several children and off they went with more arrogant nonsense. The reapers will remove all things offensive, so we have to learn to do the things that are pleasing to him. College Avenue Baptist Church or Circus. Prophecy class canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. Street sign outside of a circus. Don't follow any teaching authority but one, Yahusha. Where did they learn to do this? <clears throat> dead Buddhist priests. Dead Catholic nun. Random coincidence? These are all dead people. Excuse me. Cone, hat, and cake. Abominations to Yahuwah. There's an incredible amount of witchcraft practiced openly, which few people perceive as evil in Yahusha's eyes. Instead of pledging ourselves to invisible genies wearing wizard caps, baking cakes for the Queen of Heaven, lighting candles and making wishes, we need to be restored to favor with Yahusha. Paganism is as paganism does. If we practice evil things, we will be barred from the presence of Yahusha and not be allowed to enter through the gates of the new Yerushalayim. Blessed are those doing his commands, so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life, and to enter through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs, and those who enchant with drugs, and those who whore, and the murderers, and the idolaters, and all who love and do falsehood. Revelation 22, 14 through 15. Oh, and these are some of the books. Strong Delusion, Witchcraft, um... Truth or Tradition, Yahusha, The Return of Yahusha, Torah Zone, how, sh how Should We Live? I would love to be able to read some of these to you guys, but um, i got to find a way to get some of them. Um, Torah of Yahuwah, Covenant of Kindness, Teaching How to Love. Along with this, I have, I have the commandments at the end of this book. I didn't realize it was on the last page. Um... Covenant of Kindness, teaching, teaching how to love. 1. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Have no other before my face. 2. You do not bow to images. 3. You do not cast the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to ruin. 4. Er, yeah, 4. Remember Shabbat to keep it Kodesh, set apart. 5. Respect your father and mother. 6. You do not murder. Seven, you do not break wedlock. Eight, you do not steal. Nine, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Ten, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, house, field, servants, animals, or anything belonging to your neighbor. Love one another as I have loved you. Love Yahuwah. Love your neighbor. Sow the seeds of the reign of Yahusha everywhere. So we're done with the Reaper's lesson. Um, I'm not sure which one you guys will want me to start um, for our next lessons um, that I'm going to do with you guys. Um, Fall of Babel at the end of days. Um, 
I might read that one next. Um, yeah, I think that'll. this is going to be our next book I'm going to read our lessons out of. And um, I'll probably do Sunday Origins after that. And then I'll do Timeline. The end has already begun. For the Reign of Babel. Ancient of Days, we sing you praise, your holy name, submit to your ways. <sighs> okay, I love you all. Shalom, Mishpaka. 19 something.